Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today, in celebration of the 500 subscriber milestone, we are going to be doing our second ever Coffee Roaster tier list. So first things first, this is an American and Canadian only based coffee roaster tier list. We are possibly planning on doing a European coffee roaster tier list in the future if we ever reach the 1000 subscriber milestone. But let's go ahead and talk about the way that this tier list is going to work because the criteria to make this tier list, the coffee roasters fall into one of three categories. The first category being coffee roasters that were suggested to us in our first ever coffee roaster tier list. That being said, I only included ones that I felt I had enough familiarity to discuss and put on a list. Second being coffee roasters that we have done at least two full bag reviews of on this channel. And then the third criteria is coffee roasters from our first tier list that I felt needed to be updated for this second tier list. Now this video is going to be broken down into two parts. That gives me an opportunity to discuss these coffee roasters a little further in depth. So this first video is going to be coffee roasters 1 through 13 and then the next 14 through 26. And these are in alphabetical order. And we have six categories this time, which is different from our first tier list. This time we have world class, which is going to be reserved for coffee roasters that I feel comfortable trying everything that they release. Amazing is a unique category in the sense that I feel um, coffee roasters that fall in that category are coffee roasters that do have world-class potential, so there won't be too many in either of those two first two categories. Great is there to kind of differentiate coffee roasters that I feel are a little bit better than the ones that are just in the good category. The good category is coffee roasters that I would typically purchase something from, something I keep an eye on. And then okay are coffee roasters that aren't necessarily my first pick. And then not my cup, I do just want to say I don't think any of the coffee roasters that fall into that category are bad coffee roasters by any means. Typically they're going to be coffee roasters that might not have my sort of roasting style, roasting profile. And that's not to say that they're bad coffee roasters by any means. I might not just have had the best experiences with their coffees. But let's go ahead and start, and the first coffee roaster featured on this list is Archetype, and they're based out of Omaha, Nebraska. And they're a coffee roaster that I actually have not tried in probably about three years or so, but I do remember really enjoying a lot of the coffees that I have had from them in the past. They still have my favorite Eugenoides coffee that I have ever had, so I have so many positive things to say about them. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the good category since I have not had their coffee for a very long time. So it's entirely possible something has changed with them. Had it been a couple of years ago, I definitely feel comfortable putting them in the great category, but they are on my radar. I do want to review something from them, but for right now, I'm just going to put them in the good category. Next up, we have Bird Rock, which is based out of San Diego, California, and I have been to their cafe. I have tried several cups of coffee from their cafe, and I even brought a bag of coffee home from it. And being completely honest, I didn't necessarily enjoy any of those coffees. Bird Rock isn't necessarily my favorite coffee roaster. There's nothing particularly wrong with them, and it's kind of funny given that I have such a positive impression of their sister company, PT's. I really enjoy their coffee. So Bird Rock just isn't necessarily my preference, and for that reason, since I haven't necessarily enjoyed anything from them, I'm just going to put them in the not my cup category. Next up we have Black and White, which I think is technically based out of Wake Forest, North Carolina, but they're a North Carolina-based coffee roaster. I believe we have about a half dozen reviews of their coffee on this channel. And the quick anecdote I have for this coffee roaster is the first time I ever discovered them was when I was out in San Francisco, and the fellow store brought in several of their coffees to try, and I was really impressed with their coffee, so much so that I went on their website and purchased several of their coffees and was really impressed by those coffees as well. So once upon a time, I would put them in the world-class category. They were one of my five favorite coffee roasters in the entire world. However, they have since become one of the most experimental coffee roasters out there as they offer so many unique processed coffees. And as a result, I still think that their washed and naturals are quite impressive coffees, but I don't enjoy them as a whole as much as I did once upon a time. So this kind of goes to show with the change in coffee and with my preferences as a whole, the shift that black and white has undertaken hasn't necessarily been a positive for me. I don't order as many of their coffees as a result, so for that reason I'm putting them in the good category. Still think their wash processed coffees are some of the best out there though. All right, next up we have Blendin Coffee, which is based out of Sugarland, Texas. And up to the point where we reviewed them recently, I had never actually even heard of them before trying them, but I purchased two coffees from them, the first of which being a Maizy Wash Process Chinese coffee, which I didn't necessarily like, but everyone else told me that it wasn't a very good coffee anyway, that they didn't particularly like it. 
But the second coffee is where we're going to kind of judge them, and it was a Bolivian Batillon, and that's a really nice coffee, and I had really high expectations for that coffee going into that review. However, it wasn't necessarily my favorite cup of coffee, and based off of those two experiences, since I didn't necessarily like either of their two coffees, I have to put them in the not-my-cup category. However, I know that they're better than that. If I were to maybe try some more things from them, I know that their rank on this tier list would improve, but given that that's my last experience and my only experience with them, they do have to go into that category. All right, next up we have Blind Tiger, which was originally based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but they have since moved to Maine. And I have only reviewed two of their coffees, and I've only ever tried two of their coffees. One was an interesting anaerobic washed coffee that I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of. However, the other coffee I reviewed was the Damo, a honey processed Ethiopia. And what I saw from that Damo was huge potential. It reminded me of some of Sweet Bloom's earlier days in the sense that I saw so many really nice and unique things about this coffee roaster that I saw all the potential that it does have to offer. So as a result, I'm going to put them in the amazing category. And I think it's because they do have world-class potential. I feel like maybe if I tried more of their offerings and maybe if they had a little bit bigger of an audience, it's entirely possible that they might reach that category one day. But I really liked the coffee that I had, my most recent experience from them, so I'm going to go ahead and put them in that category for now. Next up, we have Brandywine, which is based out of Wilmington, Delaware, and that's kind of a funny coffee roaster. I've been drinking them for a very, very long time. I've been out to their brouhaha cafes in Wilmington, Delaware, and we review a fair bit of their coffee on this channel, but we only review their really experimental coffee on this channel because they do have really interesting experimental coffee offerings. That being said, when it comes to their more standard offerings, I have seen a little bit of inconsistencies with some of the coffees that I have had. Haven't necessarily been the biggest fan of some of the things they had, mostly because I've seen maybe some weird shifts in the coffee, some early tapering off, and as a result, I have mostly mixed impressions of them as a whole. It could change if maybe we reviewed some of their non-experimental coffees, and maybe we will. Really love their artwork, got to give them credit, probably the best artwork out of any coffee roaster on this tier list, but I'm going to put them in the good category, mostly due to those kind of mixed feelings about them. All right, next up we have Cat and Cloud, which is based out of Santa Cruz, California. And I believe we've done two full bag reviews of their coffee on this channel, and I have done a cupping that featured Cat and Cloud's coffees once, and just like with Bird Rock, I actually have not found anything from them that I've necessarily liked. One of the coffees that we did review last year was the Juan Pena, which I did not like anybody's Juan Pena last year. I think the Juan Pena in general was my least favorite coffee out of every coffee roaster that released the Juan Pena. So I don't hold that against them. It's just kind of the collective results of a lot of the coffees that I have had from them that has led me to say, I didn't really expect them to be as developed as they are, given that the coffee roaster they spun off from is pretty light in general. So for those reasons, not quite my roast profile, I'm going to put them in the not my cup category as well. All right, next up we have Ceremony, which is based out of Baltimore, Maryland, and they're a coffee roaster that we have not reviewed on this channel. We have been out to their cafe in Baltimore, Maryland. They have several cafes, and I've always found their coffee to be quite nice. They do a very good job, very consistent as a whole. Never anything that has necessarily blown me away. I have found them to be just solid as a whole. Do have huge respect and credit to them given that Sweet Bloom was, well, the founder of Sweet Bloom originally started at Ceremony, so they hold a very special place in my heart. That being said, I'm going to put them in the good category because I feel like they're just pretty solid, if maybe a little bit unspectacular at times. All right, next up we have Corvus, and Corvus based out of Denver, Colorado. They're the coffee roaster I have the most familiarity with out of any of these coffee roasters on this tier list, given that I used to live in Denver, and I used to swing by their coffee shop on Broadway quite regularly, and even when I'm back in Denver, I usually swing by their coffee shop. So we've reviewed four of their coffees on this channel, two experimental coffees and two high-end coffees, and I think the reason I'm going to put them in the great category is because I've had really positive results with their higher-end offerings. So while there have been times I might have been a little underwhelmed by their standard offerings, they have really done a good job with their higher end offerings, even if it was Zorro and Estribi, two of my favorite coffees in general. So Corvus is doing good work. I'm going to put them in the great category. They're a pretty solid coffee roaster. All right, next up we have Devotion, which is based out of New York City, New York, I want to say. I know they're based out of New York, but I believe that they're based out of uh, Manhattan. I know I've been to one of their cafes in New York. 
And there's a coffee shop here in Seattle that also serves their coffees exclusively. So the one knock I have on Devotion is that they only use one origin, which is Colombian. I think it makes sense. I believe the owner is Colombian, and as a result, I believe he opted to only go with Colombian coffees. And I feel like you're kind of limiting yourself as a business. Granted, I understand exactly what they're going for, but I don't find Colombian to be the most um, diverse variety. I don't believe that they're any more unique than any other origin out there. So as a result, I'm going to put them in the okay category. Had positive impressions, if maybe not necessarily my favorite. Colombian isn't necessarily my favorite origin to begin with, so not too surprising on that placement. All right, next up we have Dragonfly based out of Boulder, Colorado. And shout out to Brian if he's watching this because Brian used to be my Dragonfly hookup back in the day. I've been drinking their coffee for a very long time given that, again, I'm originally from Colorado. And Brian used to purchase so many of their higher end expensive offerings and he gave me a lot of samples. This was long before you could find their coffees in any coffee shop. The only coffee shop I was ever able to find their coffee in Boulder was actually in a bookstore. Since then, Precision Pours has served a lot of Dragonfly's coffees, and as a result, I've gotten to try a lot more of their coffee, but before that, you could only pretty much purchase bags of beans and try their coffee. I don't really know where I want to put them because it's been so long since I've had them, probably four or five years, but I have some really positive impressions of some previous experiences. Most notably, they served me one of my most floral cups I had ever had. It was the first time I had ever truly experienced a really rosy coffee. So I think that they're pretty good, but I think just like with Archetype, I have to put them in the good category because I haven't had their coffee in so long that it's more of a safe choice. My previous experiences might justify the great category, but for right now, I'm going to put them in good. All right, next up we have Equator, which is, I think, technically based out of San Rafael, California. They're based out of the Bay Area, but they're a coffee roaster that we have done two full bag reviews of on this channel. I've also been to so many of their cafes out in the Bay Area. And in addition to that, I did a cupping of Equator's coffees one time. And they're my good friend Jack's favorite coffee roaster, so I understand why he likes them. And that's probably why we've reviewed them as much as we have on this channel. However, I kept finding the same consistencies with all of the coffees that I've had from them, that they're a little bit more developed than I typically like, even their higher end offerings. And one of the worst memories I have of them is there was one time I was out in San Francisco and they served me a really, really dark roasted Ethiopian coffee. And that actually does stick out in my memory. It was right after purchasing one of their higher end Yemen offerings. So I've had a lot of their coffee. I have really positive things to say about their business. I think they're a great business. However, they're not necessarily the type of coffee that I tend to enjoy. So I'm gonna put them in the not my cup category. Think that they're great, just typically don't roast my style of coffee. And finally, we have Felix Roasting Co., which I believe is also based out of New York City, New York. I know they're based out of New York, but we have done two full bag reviews of their coffee. And one of which I'm just gonna disregard, it was a natural processed Colombian coffee. And to be fair to them, I haven't liked anybody's natural processed Colombian coffee in a very long time. Don't think that we have a single positive natural processed Colombian review on this channel, so I don't hold that one against them. However, it was the other coffee. They had a wash processed Panamanian coffee, which I was super excited about given it is so hard to find non-Gesha wash processed Panamanian coffees. And I had such high expectations for it and it felt really developed. They might be the most dark roasting coffee roaster on this tier list. So naturally that would kind of point them towards the not in my cup category given that I do tend to prefer lighter profiled coffees in general. So yeah, all of that's subject to change. It's entirely possible I might go back and try some of these coffee roasters and they might improve, they might go down. But for the most part, I'm going to leave this first part at that. I'm pretty comfortable with the rankings of these coffee roasters. We have 10 more to go, so we're going to discuss those tomorrow, and I can guarantee that a couple of those will finish in our world-class category, so definitely stay tuned for that video. But if you have any thoughts on where I place the coffees on this tier list, then please let me know in the comments down below, as I would love to kind of hear your feedback on that. Might have some controversial picks here, but for the most part, this is just kind of how I feel about these coffee roasters. Always subject to change, but if you enjoy this tier list, give this one a like and um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. But this right here has been part one of our second coffee roaster tier list. Thank you for watching.